Hello YouTube, it's Barbara Jean. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about something I was thinking on. Um, I was thinking about the the dove. Again, the Lord gave me another clue. <laughs> another clue to the mystery of the Holy Spirit. Another clue to the mystery of the church, the bride. And I believe when he showed me the two doves, the black dove and the white dove, which you'll see in my previous videos that I did before this one, um, he was showing me something, um, again, a part of the mystery of the Holy Spirit. And I, I was thinking, as I was thinking about these doves that I, the Lord showed to me last week, was how um, in the story of Noah, which you'll find in the book of Genesis, about Genesis chapter 6 to 8, 9, something like that, um, the world became very wicked and and when the, the Lord flooded the world with water, destroyed the world with water, uh, and Noah was in the ark, he sent out a dove three times, a female dove into the world three times. And the second time he sent out the dove, it came back with an olive branch in its mouth. So I began to think about this olive branch. And at first I was thinking maybe the olive tree was um, like the tree of life. Um, and then I thought, well, maybe not. <laughs> I just couldn't seem to put that together in my head. But what I was putting together in my head was about the olive tree being a symbol for the Holy Spirit. Just like the fig tree is a symbol of Israel, um, the olive tree is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Um, because when the, the, olive, the dove came back with the olive branch in its mouth, um, meaning that it rested in the olive tree. Um, it had to have come to a rest in order to bring, up, bring back this branch. Um, the olive, of course, the dove represents the Holy Spirit. Um, the, when I looked up in the Wikipedia about the olive tree, it, there was something interesting. I found a few things. Well, I'm sure there's lots of interesting things about the olive that I could have gone to, but I, I, a couple of points that really um, stood out for me was that the olive tree, of course, is mentioned quite a bit in the um, New and Old and New Testament. The olive tree has been known to... Um, hold on, i got something flashing around in here. Oh, I'm just going to have to ignore it. <laughs> i got my, my television flashing around in the background, so if you see any flashes, that's what that is. Um, but anyway, the, um, uh, the olive tree represents, uh, it could live up to 2,000 years. They have, they have documented, documented that there have been olive trees that have lived up to 2,000 years, which I think is kind of interesting since the church is almost 2,000 years old. I think that's kind of interesting. Um, also, um, there's, the, of course, the Mount of Olives outside of Jerusalem where Jesus spent a great deal of his time on the Mount of Olives. It's the highest peak in Jerusalem. And when he approached uh, Jerusalem, he approached it from the Mount of Olives. Um, he prayed his before he was arrested, before his crucifixion, he went to the Mount of Olives on the Garden of Gethsemane, Gethsemane, where he was arrested before. So where he was praying and he was went through his passion, he went to the Mount of Olives. Um, also, oh, I want to mention about the fruit. The tree itself, um, the fruit is... Um, harvested but it's harvested in the you know the, the fruit is unpalatable so the fruit has to be cured and then fermented or altered in other words altered in order for it to be an edible fruit <laughs> so it kind of brought to mind you know when we are when we are born again in the holy spirit when we are baptized into jesus christ we uh, then receive the gift of the holy spirit which cures us cures us, and then alters us and transforms us. Um, now, the, the Mount of Transfiguration, I don't believe happened on the Transfiguration of Jesus Christ. I don't believe happened on the Mount of Olives. I think they were in Galilee at the time. However, I could be wrong. But I don't think that's what happened on the, I don't think that happened on the Mount of Olives. However, Jesus had his Olivet Discourse on the Mount of Olives, which uh, where he talked about the signs of the last day. 
you know, with the signs of the end of the world and the end of time and the end of this age and all this sort of things that are going on, going to happen. All the signs that were going to happen happened on the Mount of Olives. And I found out also about the olive tree is that it is, um, of course, produces fruit, but also the oil from the fruit is very valued and used widely throughout the world, um, but produced very much in the in the Mediterranean. The tree, olive tree actually came from Babylon. The original trees came from Babylon and were spread throughout the, in the Mediterranean. But the oil itself was a symbol of uh, you anoint used olive oil to anoint kings. Um, also, uh, so it was used for anointing. It's, of course, used for food. It's used for um, healings and um, preserving, and it was also used for, um, uh, um, it was a symbol of wisdom, glory, fertility, uh, it was a symbol of, um, wisdom, glory, fertility, power, I anyway, there were several, re uh, reasons why they used the olive oil and olive branches in, uh, religious ceremonies. It was used quite widely as a, a symbol for um, victory, uh, victory over your enemies. So it was used for in war, for war, um, um, like Olympic games, or you know sports games, or an actual warfare. You were crowned with a with an olive branch on your head. You know some interesting things about the olive that this dove was carrying in its mouth. Um, so the olive, I believe, is actually in the olive tree is a symbol of the Holy Spirit, and the uh, power, the empowering of the Holy Spirit. Um, why am I bringing this up? Well, let, let me just read some scriptures here for a second. I'm going to read, go to Romans 11, something I think the Lord was showing me uh, from when I saw the two doves. He was pointing to me something, and, I, and, and again, when I looked at the bride of Christ being the black dove, and um, um, the Lord showing me the two doves together, and one day, first the black dove one day, the next day seeing the white dove, and then I believe the Lord was saying that the time of the Gentiles or the fullness of the Gentiles is coming to an end because the bride and the Holy Spirit are coming into agreement. As I've said on many of my videos over the last few years of being on YouTube, I have said the Holy Spirit and the bride come into agreement. So now they, I believe, are coming into agreement and we're coming to a time when the olive branch, the wild olive branch is going to get ready to be cut off and the natural branch being grafted back in, which is when I was talking about the Ethiopian woman uh, and Miriam being sent outside the camp because she was unclean for seven days. Um, that was a sign of Israel being cut off uh, from the, the blessing of the church, basically. She, she was not allowed to go into the tabernacle. Um, that Aaron, uh, the, when Jesus, I believe, came down in the form of a cloud in front of the temple, uh, when um, Moses married the Ethiopian woman, he blocked them from going into the, tab the tabernacle. They weren't allowed in um, because he was so angry. And Miriam was sent out with a leprous, leprous skin of uh, going white as a snow, and she was sent outside the camp for seven days, which I believe was a sign, a prophetic sign, of Israel being cut off from the fullness of the Gentiles. When, so the fullness of Gentiles have to come in, and um, sim symbolized by the Ethiopian woman, who is a you know, woman of color, and she sent, Miriam is sent outside the camp. Now, get back to the olive branch, okay, for a second. So I believe what the Lord was saying was that we are coming to the end of the Gentile era. We're right there because the bride and the Holy Spirit are now in agreement. If they're not there yet, they're almost there. They're almost in complete agreement. And so the Spirit and the bride are getting ready to say, come, which means they're getting ready to go. We're getting ready to go, and, and Miriam will be brought back into the camp, or Israel basically will be brought back into the camp. Now let's just read that in Romans. Um, let's try to illustrate what I'm saying here. Romans uh, 11, uh, where should I start? Let's see, uh, let's start from verse 7. 
What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded, according as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that should not see, and ears that should not hear, unto this day. And David saith, Let us let their table be made a snare, a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened, that they may not see, and bow down their back away, alway. Um, I say then, have they stumbled, that they should fall? God forbid, but rather that their sal that their falls, that through their fall salvation is come unto the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. Now if that fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? For I speak to you Gentiles, and as much as I am an apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. If by any means I may provoke to emulate them which are my flesh, and might save some of them, for if the casting away of them be the reconciliation, reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them, of them be but life from the, from the dead? For if the first fruits be holy, the lump is also holy. And if not, and if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches are broken off, and thou be a wild olive tree, here it is, that wild olive tree, the Holy Spirit with the olive branch in its mouth. We are wild. We are not part of the natural branch, but we're the wild olive branch, which comes through the Holy Spirit. We're grafted in among them, and with and with them partaketh of the root and fatness of the olive tree. Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Uh, thou wilt say, then, the branches were broken off, that I may be grafted in. Well, then, well, because of unbelief they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear, for if God spare not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God am on them which fell, severity, but towards thee, goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou shalt be cut off. Um, and they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft Excuse me, graft them in again. And if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and wert grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? <clears throat> For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery. There we got another mystery being solved here. Lest ye should be wise in your own conceit, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away uh, ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. Um, I think that's all I'm going to read from that right at the moment. Just to say, though, um, I'll try to make this a little shorter um, video uh, by stopping around here now. <laughs> not going on a little longer than, the, than I already am. That the Mount of Olives, I believe, is or this the sign of the dove uh, was pointing me to this mystery here that we are um, that the um, wild branches that have been unfruitful um, are going are getting ready to be um, cut off, and that the natural branches will be brought back in and uh, I believe that was the sign of the the one night the Lord showed me the two doves also the sign of Jonah if you think about what the sign of Jonah is uh, Jonah of course the name Jonah means dove which I've just discovered the, so the sign of Jonah Jonah what was he doing he was getting ready to go to Nineveh he rebelled against the Lord and didn't want to go but he ended up going anyway after being swallowed in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights but then he was cast off and he went finished his job and so this dove the sign of the dove went into Nineveh to warn them of imminent destruction okay and Jesus said the the, the only sign that this wicked generation is going to receive is the sign of Jonah which is the sign of the dove so what is this this dove? This dove is the Holy Spirit, the dove that comes down from heaven. The only sign that comes from heaven is going to be the dove. And so that this this sign of Jonah is a sign that there's imminent destruction and also that there's redemption for the Holy of the of the church. 
that the church is getting ready to flee into the wilderness and that there's imminent destruction. Um, also that Israel is getting ready to be grafted back in. She's getting ready, being ready to be brought back into the camp. I believe that's what the, the sign, what the Lord showed me was. So I think I'm going to leave it at that and uh, come back to something else. I'll do a little follow-up video after this. God bless.